I really love this place that gave off a nice warm glow, and this display is definitely one of them. This is a VFT, or a vacuum fluorescent display. I want to use this display I've had laying around for a while to make a little desktop clock that acts as an air quality monitor for my workshop. Thankfully getting this display to work shouldn't be that hard since getting data sheets for it is quite easy. So let's try that. Now interestingly, these displays are actually made in Japan, and you can probably still buy them new today. And because they're made in Japan, they include katakana, which is a system of Japanese writing. And I have a pretty cool idea for how I can use these Japanese characters in my final clock. But you'll only get to see that later on. For now though, let's talk about what we actually need to monitor the air quality. And I just so happen to have a small collection of sensors that can measure various aspects of the air around us. This one measures the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. And this funky little thing is an environmental sensor node. It's a little fan that blows air in here and can monitor a couple things, such as the humidity, temperature, the levels of dust in the air, VOCs and NOx. What actually are VOCs and NOx? VOCs are actually gases like ethanol and formaldehyde. This can come from anything that contains these sorts of chemicals, something like hand sanitizers, perfumes, and even Sharpies. And formaldehyde can come from things like paint, glue, and even new furniture. NOx, on the other hand, can come from ozone sources like a gas stove, bleach, or even outdoors. Now I mentioned earlier that this sensor can measure dust as well. Now the way this sensor can actually measure the dust in the air is by checking the individual sizes of the particles in the air and counting them. So this little fan that I showed you before takes air in here and blows it through to these holes right here. And further along, or at some point inside it, there is a laser being shot out. Whenever this laser hits a particle, an optical sensor can detect that based on its size goes off to a little microchip that counts how many of each particle size there are and sends that data back out to our microcontroller. Now all we have to do is just hook up these sensors, test them out, see how we can combine them to test the air quality. Now we've got all these sensors working, but <laughs> a desk clock isn't going to do much good without actually being able to tell the time. For time, we'd need a real-time clock. This is a DS3231 real-time clock chip. So all we have to do is add that in, reflash our code, and we've got most of the way there. I did a bit of the aesthetic code as well, just to see how it would look, and it'll give you an idea of what I wanted to do with the Japanese characters. Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Quite happy with how this came out. Currently, I just have it going between the pages, basically just after a couple seconds, it just switches to the next page, which is the next one. Now, all I really need to do to solve that is to just add a rotary encoder that lets me switch between the pages at will. All right, so getting that implemented wasn't too difficult, but now I can actually go slower through some of these menus and show you some of the features. But this is kind of just like a basic time, time of day, and this is the correct time and date, so this RTC was definitely already correct before I put it in. But I have a specific plan for this display. I have a problem in my life where I constantly have to change or have to convert time zones. And I've gotten tired of having to Google what the difference between here in Mountain Time or here in Denver Time, Chinese Time. I'm tired of having to Google it every single time. So instead, what I'm gonna do is add a feature to this clock where I can select any particular time I want and then just change the actual time zone. And so I can select a specific time of the day, then, oh, in Japan that would be 1.40, Hong Kong would be 12.40, and so on and so forth. So to be able to select any time I want, I decided to use one of these. This is a potentiometer, most commonly used in audio equipment and things like that. Interestingly enough, this one also lights up. So let's hook this up, and I'll show you what I mean. Someone tells me, oh, I have a meeting at 2 p.m. Mountain Time, set it to 2 p.m. And there, it shows me that that's roughly 9 o'clock my time. One thing you may have noticed is that this thing is a mess and a half. As much as it'll match the aesthetic of my desk, I don't think I can really use it in this sort of state. Now, normally I use Fusion 360, but I wanted to try use FreeCAD to design a little case for it. And this seemed like a good a project as any to test it out. So I guess let's hop over and see what I designed. After fighting it, I managed to get this wonderful thing modeled out. I printed out this already, so Let's give it a look see and see if anything fits. Thankfully I've got spares of most of this stuff so I don't need to take everything apart, but... Okay, that looks good so far. Okay, quite liking that. Let's see if I can spare one of these. It's quite nice. Now for the final piece.
complete. So happy with that so far. Now for the enclosure to set to go with this sort of extruded style, time to go send this off to the printer and see how it goes. All I have to do is test fit it, just plonk it in, find the various screws I wanted to use, quite happy with how this is looking. Obviously this isn't going to do a whole lot without all these electronics inside of it. So how am I going to mount these in here? The best way I know how. So I guess let's try to get all these electronics crammed inside of here. Okay now just before I forget to do a quick fit test. Okay, it's in there nice enough. Not pretty, but it'll probably work. That's all that matters for this project. Right, okay, so I think I've gotten pretty much everything I was going to wire up, wired up. And I just wired it to the board, I still have to wire them to each other. But God knows I'm not going to label any of this. And I think that should let the display work. I can try and plug it in just to... I, mean, I can't really see a reason why it shouldn't work. Hey, there we go! Now all that's left is the CO2 sensor, the rotary encoder, and the linear potentiometer. So let's plow on! There you go. CO2. Yes! Looking gorgeous, isn't it? I think that's time for the next power-up test. Oh! Hey! That's amazing. Look at that. Let's see if that works. Yep. Based on that. Okay, now for the moment of truth. I guess unceremoniously I'm gonna have to just put this all in here like a half-assed college project. That's not a good sign. It's getting stuck on. Some of these wires are just a bit too far out. And hopefully my cramming and jamming didn't break anything. So I guess the only thing there is left to do is screw it on. Hope for the best. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Yes! <laughs> Look at it. It's actually even prettier than I imagined it being. Now, one thing I have kind of thought about is this rotary encoder is just sitting here pretty much naked. Now, I like the densiometer. I quite like the way that looks without any sort of knob on it. So what I might do is 3D print a new one. So I'm going to go design another little knob just to kind of match the aesthetics of this thing. Let's see if this one fits. Okay, that's a very bit nicer. I'm actually really happy with how this came out. The initial plan was to actually build it in a day, but I'm quite happy I spent a bit of extra time to get some cooler features, cooler case, and make it all around look a bit prettier. And if you want to build your own one, I'm going to publish all of the design files, all the code on my GitHub and I'll link it in the description. But other than that, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.